What is a dystopian society? Where utopian describes a civilization that's conceived to be perfect, a dystopian is the exact opposite, where you have a futuristic society or state where everything is bad. They're usually characterized by totalitarian governments, civilizations after environmental disasters, or other events that have led to a dramatic decline in society. Dystopian societies appear in many subgenres of science fiction that are often used to draw attention to potential as well as real world trends and issues within modern civilization. So today I thought I'd make a video focusing on sci-fi dystopian societies. Director Alex Poirier's mystery thriller, Dark City. John Murdoch, a man who's struggling with memories of his past, wakes in a strange hotel within an even stranger city that has no sun. After it becomes clear that some people with special powers are after him, while on the run, Murdoch tries to piece together his past and figure out exactly what's going on. With fantastic cinematography, special effects, top-notch performances and an interesting gothic noir style, Dark City has breakneck pacing which keeps you engaged throughout the film. It's a movie that makes you think a lot, where you will most likely watch it over and over again to figure everything out. While this movie never gets old and I highly recommend it, its bleak dark tones and fast pace might put some people off. Director Pete Travis's action drama, Dread. Within the post-apocalyptic metropolis of Mega City 1, the police known as judges have the authority to act as judge, jury and executioner. Negotiations over. While assigned to evaluate a psychic rookie, wretched Judge Dredd and his cadet get trapped in a building complex, where the only way out is to take down the Marmar clan. Unlike its 1995 older brother, I am the law. Dredd is closely based on the 2000 AD comic, where Carl Urban is the perfect Dredd. Without the cheesy backstory, he's portrayed more like Clint Eastwood's Man With No Name, whose dialogue is limited to one-liners. He has no personal arc, character development or sense of humor. He doesn't take his helmet off, he just kicks ass. And Judge Anderson is cool too. I love this movie, I think it's highly underrated, so if you haven't seen it, please go check it out. Director Francois Truffaut's drama, Fahrenheit 451. In an oppressive future where books have been outlawed by the government, fearing an independent thinking population, Guy Montag is a fireman whose duty is not to put fires out, but to destroy all books by incinerating them. But things begin to change for Montag when he starts to question his occupation. Based on the Ray Bradbury novel of the same name, Fahrenheit 451 is a fairly unusual film right from the start, where its credits are read out instead of being written. Colour by Technicolor. Art director Sid Kane. While the main character Montag feels a little zombie-like, the movie is still entertaining in its own strange way. While in my opinion it's never going to be a movie for repeated viewings, it's still worth a watch and ideal for people who want to watch something a bit different. Fukusaku Kinji's adventure drama, Battle Royale. In the near future, Japan is in a state of near collapse, where violence among the nation's youth is spiraling out of control. With teenagers physically abusing their teachers, a near-defeated government decides to introduce a radical new measure, the Battle Royale Act. This is definitely a love-hate movie where it's extremely violent and has a pretty over-the-top plot. This movie subtly comments on several subconscious issues within modern Japan's culture, where Japan is obsessed with its youth, which helps explain why anime's protagonists are most often 15-year-old high school students. In the end, Battle Royale is not a film for just anyone. There will be some of you that really hate it, and I can't blame you for that, but then again, some of you will definitely love it. Richard Felicia's crime mystery, Soylent Green. In a world ravaged by overpopulation and the greenhouse effect, as natural foods like vegetables and meat have almost become extinct. The only way humanity can survive is with water rations and a mysterious food called Soylent. The story kicks off when an NYPD detective investigates the murder of a big company CEO. Soylent Green is a classic film that's really solid but not without its faults like the strong feeling of it being set in the 1970s rather than in the future. The acting in this film is first rate, where the interplay between Heston and Robinson is thoroughly entertaining, especially in the scene where they're eating real food. Solent Green's story is really interesting throughout and carries the film all the way to a great conclusion. It's a smart sci-fi that is well worth your time. George Lucas's debut feature film, THX 1138. 
Set in the 25th century, the human race has been relocated to an underground city located beneath the Earth's surface, where a robotic police force enforces the law using drugs to control its population. The story follows THX and LUH who rebel against their rigidly controlled society. THX 1138 is a solid well-made film produced on a low budget. With a very clear moral story, there's not much here as far as characters, but Robert Duvall gives a good performance. It has an interesting take on an Orwellian future and has a pretty extreme use of white in its set design. It holds your attention fairly well, but a warning to those of you who don't like slow-paced movies. This film's story unfolds at a snail's pace. Director Kurt Wimmer's action drama, Equilibrium. Josh Whedon's action adventure, Serenity. Set in a universe ruled by the Alliance, a regime hell-bent on bringing its version of a totalitarian utopia to fruition, the story follows the crew of the smuggler starship Serenity, whose harboring River, a highly sought-after fugitive wanted by the Alliance, who has a deadly secret that they don't want getting out. Who said all dystopians couldn't be fun? The follow-up to the cancelled TV show Firefly, Serenity has no problems as a standalone film. It's filled with Josh Wilden's witty dialogue and one-liners, as well as having some pretty cool space battle and fight scenes combined with a well-paced and interesting plot. The entire cast were born to play their roles, where they have brilliant chemistry, and Chiwi Tao Ejiofor's performance as the bad guy assassin is hard to forget. Hey, if you guys are new here to channel Hyperdrive, then make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified on my next video release. And if you really enjoyed the video, do me a massive favor and drop a like, and I will catch you guys later.